have you been? Did you know the circus is in town? It's Daddy's circus. He says it's gonna be the biggest thing ever. Except he always says stuff like that, and then something goes wrong. And Vincenzo's my real daddy. We have to go talk to him. There aren't any pictures of the bad times. These are in the basement. She only takes them out when Daddy's living with us. You know when stories where the little girl is really a princess and her parents aren't really her parents? Does she still get to see them? notice. Daddy says he's going to pay all the bills when the circus is a big hit. Come on, I want to go find Vincenzo. Hey, Vincenzo, ready for our big night? People are really excited. You're gonna have to give them their money back. What? We're sold out. You haven't paid me. I got the money, we're selling out. You'll have it before the show. Even if you do, I can't perform here. Your circus is a disaster. It's coming together. Your puppet show about the princess is missing the princess. You've lost your hot air balloon, and where did you get that pirate ship? It is a broken down piece of junk. Come on, Vincenzo, it's opening day. There's always a few wrinkles to iron out. Look, I'll get it all fixed. No problem, consider it done. All right. But don't think that I will be some sort of shiny bauble that lures people into your scrapyard. He's so mean. I'll get it fixed, I promise. Or I'm a dead man. I'm worried about Daddy. He always says it's okay, but those gangsters really hurt him. We have to fix the circus, so Daddy will be safe. Mom, it's this way. Hey, has anyone seen the princess puppets? We can't really start the story without her. 
That sounds like daddy. Ah, she was right here. She had a hat, a sort of princess hat. Darn, where did I put her? Ah, there she is. Once upon a time, there was a princess who lived in a castle with her father, the king. The king loved her very much because daddies love their daughters. Unfortunately, the kingdom also had an ogre who was eating travelers because ogres do that. So the king did what kings do and promised that anyone who slew the ogre would get to marry his only daughter, the princess, and become king when he died. The king's lands were very far away and the ogre was very large, so only one knight showed up. His name was Fred, and he fell immediately in love with the princess. Fred was a brave knight, and he marched off the next morning, singing a brave song as loudly as he could. After several days had passed, the princess got to wondering what had happened to her future husband? So she set off into the forest to look for him. The princess tracked Fred's footprints through a strange wilderness full of scary sounds and hidden dangers. Chasms filled with razor-sharp bamboo. Fortunately, she was a very brave princess who loved adventures, just like you. She used her wits to get past unexpected obstacles. She came to a wide river filled with snapping crocodiles. She couldn't even swim. So what do you think she did? She ran on top of her head. That's right. It was a magical forest where the plants seemed to know each other. She had to use magic mushrooms to get high or up. She learned to use some bendy tree branches to fling herself across a patch of deadly sharp bamboo. As the sun was setting, she came to the giant ogre's castle. And there, the princess discovered that the ogre had captured Fred and hung him from a tree as a snack. The ogre did not appreciate visitors at all. Even Fred seemed a little embarrassed to see him. The princess was a woman of action, and she was nimble, and the ogre was clumsy and easy to talk. That's, That's when you make fun of them. You should never make fun of people, but with ogres, sometimes you have to. And so the princess tricked the ogre and rescued Fred. Fred didn't feel too good about it. He really loved the princess. Fortunately, the king told him about a giant spider that he could slay in order to win the princess's hand. So Fred marched off to the lair of the giant spider, singing a brave song, a little less loudly than before. After several days had passed, the princess got to wondering what had happened to her future husband. So she went off looking for him again. 
Fred's footprints led her into a dark and creepy cavern, full of strange dripping sounds, kind of like the basement at school. Her footsteps echoed and echoed, until it sounded like someone was following her. Soon, she came to a vast pit. Unfortunately, she impaled herself on the bamboo. Wait, that's not what happened. Soon, she came to a vast pit, filled with vicious, deadly spikes. It was much too big to jump over, but far off, she could hear moaning. She thought it might be Fred. So what do you think she did? I know, I know. What? She used an umbrella. What? Like that nanny in that movie. This is the Middle Ages, honey. Where would she get an umbrella? I don't know, but that's what she used. I don't, I, I don't think I have an umbrella. Well, you better find one, because she used an umbrella. Where am I supposed to get an umbrella? Oh, uh, there we go. So, the princess bravely threw herself into the air, slowing her fall using an umbrella. Just like that nanny in the movie. Deeper and deeper into the cavern she floated. She thought she could hear Fred moaning. But maybe it was only the wind. Finally, she landed softly. Right in a spider's web! Fortunately, it was a very old web, and she was able to break free. Unfortunately, the web was the only thing holding up a giant boulder. The princess needed to find somewhere to hide. jumped out of the shadows and attacked her. She ran and climbed and jumped and climbed, but the giant spider was very good at climbing too. It had eight legs and the princess only had two. Princess remembered how the webs were holding up boulders. Poor spider. Finally, she found Fred. He was all wrapped up like a present for the giant spider's girlfriend. He was dreadfully embarrassed about having to be rescued again. He really loved the princess. The princess decided he was cute. Fortunately, the king told him about a dragon that he could slay in order to win the princess's hand and stop being so embarrassed. So Fred marched off to the mountaintop of the dragon, singing a brave song, very quietly. After a few days, the princess got to wondering... Why her dad kept trying to give her away? That too. But she was worried about Fred, so she went off to find him. The dragon's mountain was cold, and the wind howled at her to turn back. There were rock slides and fiery chasms, but she was very brave and nimble, just like you. She wasn't going to be put off by a few deadly dangers.
up and up she climbed. When she got cold, she thought about the hot buttered muffins she would make once she got Fred home. Do you still like muffins? I love muffins. The princess hoped Fred liked muffins. When the princess got to the lair of the dragon, she was not very surprised to see Fred hanging from the roof of the dragon's cave. So she taunted the dragon until it roared its fiery presence. up Fred. And so the princess and Fred lived happily ever after. Fred never had to go on another adventure again, and they had hot buttered muffins every morning. There is another version of the story where the princess flew off on the dragon's back to have a life full of adventures, but that's for another day.